Ladies, Hello. it's really good to have you. So have you here? Um, I was just interviewed by Vanessa and now I guess I'm sort of having this conversation with you guys here at the Chicago Lab podcast. Thank you for being here. We'll start with you, Christine, if you can start by introducing yourself and then we'll hear from Stephanie. Well, thank you for having us on the Chicago podcast. We're very excited to be here as part of the Haiti Tech Summit. I'm Christine Coupet Jacques, a marketing professional, also a special advisor to the president of Haiti, a passionate about marketing and this event has just been so inspiring that we are getting together to work on big projects. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. So a lot of networking going on. Yes. Oh, I love it. Well, my name is Stephanie Prasivir. I am a public relations strategist. Uh, I also started a company called Women Pressmakers not too long ago, wow. um, helping to empower women and uh, want them, wanting them to thrive independently. I'm completely inspired uh, being here, meeting Kristen as well as yourself, uh, talented women, uh, thriving and just buzzing and putting Haiti on the map. Yes, yes. absolutely. I'm loving this <laughs> women power thing that yes. we got going on here. <laughs> well, what would you say um, one of the, uh, some of the, the topics that have been discussed here that yes. has had a, a major impact on you? Um, since you've been attending the conference, like between yesterday and today? Um, I've just heard so much positive. I've just felt so much positive energy. I think there's been a lot of uh, positive uh, talks. Um, I just took part this morning on the women's panel. Uh, just so inspiring, listening to Christine and Tim, listening yes. to... Uh, the different ladies on the panel with such different perspectives, right. but all in the same direction. And I think one of the most important connections for me is linking back to the Haitian diaspora. Um, having lived myself in the US for six, seven years in college, I didn't really connect with the Haitian community, which I realize now would have been such a huge network for me if in school, I had connected, because I have a huge network from school, but from people all over the world. Right. I just never made a special attention to connect to the Haitian community. I was very a little involved in the you know, Haitian Student Association at my school. And I think I regret it now, because the Haitian diaspora is shining so bright. And I've met such interesting people since coming to the Haiti Tech Summit last year and such inspiring, not just women, men and women, yes. young, young people, much younger than me, that are doing such wonderful things. And this morning they were talking about mentorship, for example. I don't think the mentors are the old people with experience anymore. It's the other way around. Wow. The mentors for me are this up and coming youth that have been exposed to such technology mm -hmm. and that have been exposed to such you know, high level of education. They're so open-minded and they're teaching me to open my mind and learn different ways and different things. So it's super exciting. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> it's powerful, that's for awesome. sure. Yeah. Um, for me, what touched me the most would be, there seems to be like, um, our voices are united for change. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's the message that calling me, change for empowerment, change for growth, uh, change for togetherness. And I feel like everyone has been kind of talking about that. There's a lot of opportunity in Haiti. There's a lot of, uh, you know, inspirational growth that could happen in Haiti. And I think that's why we're all here. We're all inspired by this event. And um, that was the thing that resonated with me the most, I think. Inspired by yes. the event. Yes. Um, you, you mentioned something. Yes. Um, you mentioned something about not being involved um, in the Haitian student organization on your campus. Um, tell me a little bit about that, because I was highly involved. At, well, in the Haitian um, I think student that, organization on my campus. I think that having been educated in Haiti, having gone to Haitian school until uh, Reto, when I went to university, I wanted to meet everybody. Right. You know, I didn't want to get stuck in a Haitian circle and speak Creole all the time. I right. remember 
one of my good friends, Jis Hassin, who could be watching this, oh, when, my, <laughs> when my cousin JP called me and said, I have a friend in Boston. He's really unhappy. Could you meet with him and have lunch? I was like, I don't want to go meet another Haitian. Haitian. You know, like, <laughs> I want to meet everybody. And it's not that there was anything wrong. And Jill and I became best buddies till now. But, and I did go have lunch with a little bit of an attitude, like, okay, why does this guy, like, when right. I have lunch, you know, <laughs> and he was on the contrary, stuck on a campus and was very unhappy. We went the year of the embargo, so we got stuck. Oh wow! And we weren't even sure when we were going to be able to come home. I was accepted in school, but Gilles went and he was there on a summer program and just had to stay. Oh, wow. So he wasn't even mentally prepared to be in school. So um, we just ended up doing that and hanging out together for the rest of the four years wow. <laughs> and beyond. But um, I was making a special effort to be part of an international scene, trying to get out of the Haiti borders and trying to meet people from all over the world. I visited friends in South America, in the Caribbean. I went all over the place because coming to Haiti, I, was, I already knew all the Haitians. Right. So it's not that I had a problem, but I wanted to be involved in a very international scene. I so different perspective. I and I think coming from the diaspora, it's the contrary. They're already involved in the international scene right. and they want to find a way to connect to Haiti. Right. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, Stephanie, how, was your, how, how have your experience been? My experience has been really great. It's been kind of like the very typical integration. Started a church, you know, yes. was part of like the dance uh, troupe. True. <laughs> yes. yes, you know. Yes. And um, when I was in elementary school, I was probably the only Haitian girl up until grade seven or eight. Oh, wow. Yeah. And can you tell us where that is? Oh, in Ottawa, Ontario. Yes. Yes, yeah, I could tell you for sure. Shout out to Ottawa. <laughs> if you guys know what, where that is. Yeah. Um, but, um, and then, you know, when we, when I arrived to high school, for example, mm -hmm. all the Haitian were like, right. You know, right. I'd be like, oh, you speak Creole. You know, so it was really popular to, right. you know, so all the Haitian kids would like get together, get together and do Gravity their own thing. Gra yeah. Yes, kind of happened naturally. Um, in university, however, because it's so dispersed mm -hmm. and um, I didn't really integrate myself that much as much as I wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, but I find myself now that I'm like a professional woman being um, inspired by like-minded women that are Haitian, that are doing something really nice. Um, mm -hmm. I'm feeling that, you know, and I actually first came to Haiti ever in my life last year. Wow. Yes, wow. yes, yes, yes. And I immediately fell in love with the country, you know. And of course, it was like the stigma around it. Right. I'm nervous. What is this going to happen? Like, what's going to, you know, and I'm like, what's happening? And then I realized that it was completely false. Absolutely. The country is absolutely breath breathtaking. And there's a lot of opportunity here. And then I came back here for the Haiti Tech Summit, and I'm like, okay, now I know for sure I want to do something here. I want to work with women. I want to empower them. Um, I also want to work with the youth here and teach a different message. So to anyone who's scared about coming to Haiti, yes, please don't yes. be. It's not true. <laughs> Come over. We need you. We love you. Let's all work together. Yes. Take <laughs> Haiti to the next level. Yes. I think that um, myself, for example, I remember when I was uh, in Boston, I actually volunteered at a high school, um, and I taught Haitian parents how to read. I did a lot of workshop with Haitian parents because the kids were just blowing them up. And right. They didn't even understand how to read the report cards. Mm. You know, like when somebody had an A plus or a D plus, I remember somebody getting an incomplete, an I, and one of the kids told the parents it was incredible. Oh my <laughs> gosh, incredible. So um, I taught Haitian parents how to read the grades and you, we spoke a lot and I did a lot of workshops because of the language. So they used me and that was volunteer. I was getting credit for the volunteering mm. time. In the Haitian community, they, I got credit for you know teaching them how to fill out immigration papers, right. not to beat their children, a lot of sensitive topics. Mm -hmm. So today, when I look at the generation of Haitian 
a diaspora that I'm meeting at places like the Tech Summit, I'm blown away that these parents have raised those kids. Yes. You know, the first generation of parents who is going to the States, not speaking English, mm-hmm. putting their kids through school, not understanding yes. completely the dynamic of how it worked. The kids were just like lying to the parents. Um, there was some violence and right. kids were calling the police on parents and things. But today, when I look at what these this generation of kids is providing thriving. and yes. thriving and the leading even right. and yeah. I'm blown away by the attachment of a third generation diaspora to this country, to this country. Mm-hmm. Um, I understand why parents would say not to come and I met so many people who are like my mom told me not to come and I've been calling her telling her what a good time I'm having I can't believe this this is amazing this island's beautiful they want to stay they're like can we meet with you on Monday we'll change our flights this is incredible it is. so for me this connection has been like amazing That's you know good. just to see the level of education what these people are bringing to the table the power they have, the intelligence, the preparation, just amazing. Listening to your podcast yes. a little bit yes. is, is exactly the language that I speak, you know, and that we were just having a conversation. It's yes. really like been right on. Yes. So. I think um, as women, mm-hmm. it is extremely important for us to be grounded when it yes. comes to proper money management. Now, we yeah. love the men, they go yeah. great, they go to work, they bust their tail, they make the money. But honestly, we really Not manage in this it. place all the time. Yeah. But. yeah I mean, you're right, you're right, you're right. But, you know, we have to give them some credit. Yes. Yeah, we have of to course. Give, we don't want to take... But you're right. You were talking on your panel this morning, and you said, Christine, uh, someone mentioned, it was Daniela, who said, the women, we are the potomita. Yeah. Right, mm-hmm. and as Potomita, mm-hmm. we work hard, we yes. cook, we clean, we make sure our kids go to school. Yes. We're the nurses, we're the yes. teachers, we're everything. Mm-hmm. It's also important that we make sure that the financial future, mm-hmm. yeah. their financial future, in addition to our financial yes. future, is secure. Mm-hmm. And in my experience, I find that at times women, right, are having. Uh, they're kind of uncomfortable to have that conversation yes. or they don't have it at all. Yes. I think there's, come to mind. there's a big education process that needs to happen because, in fact, if, what I can add to what you were saying earlier about the financial management is that Haiti is a mentality of a day-to-day economy. Yes. Okay, so people live on what they make, make. during the day. So they made a hundred gourds. They go and buy food for the hundred gourds. When they wake up, they'll figure it out the, the next, next day. day. Absolutely. And there's not a mentality of preparing for the future. There's not a mentality mm-hmm. of saving for a rainy day or being prepared for emergencies. When there's an emergency or a debt in the Haitian family, they sell a piece of land. Right. Mm-hmm. But one day, there's no more land. They have a cotization. Or something like that. Right. You know, when there's a medical emergency, people pitch in from right. different uh, parts of the family. So people don't have the just they the don't reflex. Have it. They don't have it, and they they don't get that financial education, which is something that I've been trying to pass on. And I've I did Kaya's first show this year to talk about you know financial planning and. Um, savings and different tips and and I think that's extremely important and there's a big need for people right now um, Haitians grow up thinking they don't have access to a bank there's tricks to the business right you know there's things you need to be prepared before you go ask the bank for a loan right so there are things there are stepping stones so that these things can be taught and I think there's a big big market and there's a big demand for people's financial education the way you just put it yes i I agree as you know that's my passion that's my baby um i think and i get it people talk about poverty and they talk about how um people don't don't have a lot of money so whatever they make they spend but i think i get that but we have another generation that's coming yeah we don't want them to adopt the same mindset and 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 i think it's the psychology 
really understanding these people and say, okay, fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I understand you make songs with Jodi. You understand what I mean? And just kind of, it doesn't have to be a lot. We can take baby steps. And what can we do to maybe buy something in the name of your child? Just kind of, we need to get out of this. I need, give me, can you lend me, voyez pour moi, envoie moi, moi, me, and all that. We need to kind of break that chain. Yeah. You know, break, because Haitian people are hard workers. They I'm are. walking in the street, what to one have a business? Yeah, but they did, they, they make you, a little more, they have a party, and they eat a little more. Right. And they celebrate. Right. And they don't think about tomorrow. And you, mm -hmm. as you said, it is the mindset. Yeah. It is the mindset. And once they start seeing... Uh, any level of success I believe in my soul will start shifting a little bit towards wealth building mm -hmm. I had someone tell me you don't understand Swanelli you can't to have that conversations with Haitians listen yes you if can. there is a will there is a way because everybody love their kids mm -hmm. yeah we're about to do something yes. and you're gonna be part of it hey yes. <laughs> everybody yes, yes. <laughs> Everybody loved yes. their kids. Everybody loved yeah. their family. Yes. Everybody wants to leave the world, leaving the people that are coming yes. after them better than how they found it. Yes. So, it, it telling me that I cannot give up. Yeah. You can't give up hope. You can't give up no, that there's a possibility and actually when you that teach this them, can happen. I, I'm, I had an experience with a, with a company that actually hired me as a trainer to train very low skill uh, salespeople on the street. Mm -hmm. And I sat with them and did personal, we did trainings like personal hygiene, right. mm -hmm. but we did trainings like personal finance, right. and teaching them how to save a certain percentage of their revenues, and how much they reinvest, and because Haitians, their mentality is mm -hmm. so they just flip the product. Mm -hmm. You buy hundred words of product, you sell it three times in the day, you replenish, and you did X amount three times. Mm -hmm. and that's the way they calculate profit margins mm -hmm. and money. Mm -hmm. So, But there's no concept of a um, l'argent and principal, and then they don't pay interest most of the time because they're just on credit for, 30 day, for the day. Right. You buy in the morning, you pay it the next morning when you get the next case, when you get the next... Uh, stock right so there's a lot going on in this economy that's so informal that people don't have those habits but i have done trainings with low skill workers and open bank accounts with them yes Ooh. and got them to save this good per day right but that's the deep good that's going to change their lives mm. and then when they make a little more they start saving very good mm -hmm. and then then send good Absolutely. And that's the money that saves for a rainy day, saves to buy a land. I have so many friends that have come to me for advice about buying a house. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, guys, it's, it's, it's really simple. Mm -hmm. But there, you, it needs a couple of years of preparation, depending right. on how bad you've been managing your finances mm -hmm. those past few years. Right. So you may not be able to do it today, but if you set a goal for yourself, there are steps to take people like you to yes. train them absolutely. you know financial advice available sometimes even for free right yes. absolutely sometimes even for free yes. for people to plan better and reach their financial objectives i agree a lot of the times we don't know how to set our financial objectives right. you know so that's step one right so that's yes. why i said when we were talking about earlier in my podcast yeah. um you just the diaspora needs to nod because they have access to it, right? So when we bring it to Haiti, that's something that can be a little bit more complicated, but it is doable. But the diaspora, the more, the wealthier the diaspora is, the more people in Haiti can benefit from them really establishing themselves. Yeah. So uh, I believe that. Uh, it's I do have greater plans, though. Hopefully, um, Kyle will invite me back and I can dive into that a little bit more. Um, it will change Haiti mm -hmm. as, as a country, uh, but uh, it'll be for, for, for the best and an yes. impact generation. So We're ready for you. Yes, we are. <laughs> so yeah. thank you, yeah, ladies, for, for sure. having this conversation and participating yeah. in this. Yes, it's such an honor meeting you yes. and meeting you, yes, and I look yes. forward to our work together and, and, 
Yes, being the Potomitan um, and helping other Potomitans, yes. you know, strengthening this country and, and empowering. Yes, yes, yes. absolutely. Yes. So thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. It's been great. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> thank you, Karel.